Welcome back to week six and in video three we're going to delve into some of the details of global circulation patterns. So like we talked about last week we noticed that there are three different circulation patterns that has to have developed on the earth. If we had a, a non-spinning earth um, with one cell, you would see that air would be rising at the equator and then sinking at the poles. And then the airflow on the surface would be just moving from the poles to the equator and then back up. So pretty simple pattern. But the Earth is not that simple. The Earth is more complex. We are spinning and we actually have three different cells that have developed. We have the polar cell because air is sinking at the poles traveling over the surface, heating up slightly, rising, and then sinking again. And then down at the equator, we have the tropical or the Hadley cell, where air heats up at the equator, rises, cools, condenses, produces precipitation, eventually cycles to the mid-latitude region, and sinks, heats up again, and continues the pattern. So both... Welcome back to week six in video two. The air flows from north to south in cells one and three, so in the polar and the Hadley cell. But in the middle here, cell two is kind of like the gear stuck in between, and the flow is actually the opposite. The air moves from south to north in what is called the feral cell. So this would be considered an indirect cell because it because it is not affected by um, the um, it's not driven by the uh, pressure changes and temperature changes, whereas cells one and three are direct cells because they're directly related to temperature, helping to circulate that air. So as a result of these three different circulation patterns, as we have air rising at the equator, we end up with clouds being produced, air sinks here at the mid-latitude zones, rises again in the um, upper polar area. What happens is at the polar, the convergence of subtropical and polar areas, and then at the convergence of the tropical and subtropical, we end up with these jet streams that have developed as a result. Whereas air is being added to one up here in the polar jet, and air is being taken from one over here at the subtropical jet. So what does that look like? Well, um, we have a cross-sectional view here showing you the Hadley cell. This is the equator, air is rising, cooling, condensing, forming clouds and precip. You have the subtropical jet that forms as a result of this pattern. And then here we have the ferro cell and we have the polar jet that results. Um, and you can see because of this rising air, we have again, precip and clouds. And these different jets are actually traveling around the Earth um, roughly at those latitudes of 30 degrees north for the subtropical and 60 degrees north for the polar jet. So these two jet streams are what actually help to carry along a lot of these major weather patterns that we're going to talk about and moves these low pressure and high pressure systems from place to place. So if we looked more detailed view of where some of these high and low pressure centers are. It's not like we have a band of low pressure that sits all along this one line of latitude. It looks a little bit more like this. So we have um, northern hemisphere on top, southern hemisphere on the bottom. Um, the white lines are showing you the average, average sea level pressure. The white arrows are showing you the surface wind flow pattern. So what we see is um, right about uh, just above the equator, we see a, kind of a loose band of high pressure systems where air is sinking. And then above that, we have low pressure systems. If we look down to the Southern hemisphere, similar thing. Um, we only have high pressures located here. So this changes from season to season. And that's why we're gonna pull up this media to take another look at this. So if we look at the globe here, we have some various little kind of comma or hook shaped patterns that you see in the mid latitude areas, these little hook shapes. And those are a result of some of these weather patterns that we see. If we look at our insulation, so the amount of 
energy getting to the surface of the earth in the winter, you see that the darker color is more, uh, more energy. So this would be summer in the southern hemisphere, winter in the northern hemisphere. If I look at surface temperatures in the winter, we see that correlates. We see warmer temperatures to the, in the southern hemisphere, cooler in the north. If I flip flop this and look at summer temperatures, we see that things have shifted. We have warmer temperatures in our northern hemisphere, cooler in the south, because the northern hemisphere is now tilted towards the sun. So we're getting more energy. So what does that mean for air pressure and winds? Well, if I click on summer surface air pressure, and I can click on here to get our actual high pressure, low pressure systems, we see in the summertime, more high pressure systems in the northern hemisphere, some lower pressure centers, um, but more of them larger, and especially in our neck of the woods, the low pressure systems are smaller. So that means we're having more of the cooler, sorry, the warmer conditions with less precip. If we flip here to the winter time, and I show these, we have our high pressure systems shrinking and our lower pressure systems getting larger and things are shifting as well. We see this low pressure band along the equator and higher pressure further to the south. So it's kind of flip-flopped back and forth. So the other question is, if we have these high pressure systems, low pressure systems, the airflow developing, these air pressure systems affect more than just the air. They also help to um, drive some of these ocean currents. So ocean currents is basically the movement of a large quantity of seawater in the ocean. And here you can see patterns where um, the darker color, the lighter colors refer to faster moving currents, the darker blues are slower. And these currents can flow from at the surface and also at deeper depths. So because we have these winds produced from atmospheric circulation, these winds are going to directly affect those ocean currents. So where we have wind patterns blowing like at the equator here from east to west, we end up with ocean currents blowing that way. In our neck of the woods, where the winds are gonna be blowing to the west, we see the air, the ocean currents following those air currents. So there's a direct correlation between those two. So to kind of recap, um, we looked at temperature and the major global patterns. We also looked briefly at airflow. Basically temperature, higher temperature near the equator, the shifts from winter to summer, and uh, depending on what hemisphere you're in. And then airflow, we have the westerlies that develop in our neck of the woods as a result of the indirect feral cell. And then the jet streams that we talked about as well. And I just wanna pull up uh, and talk about precipitation really quickly. We can also, if I look at summertime precipitation amounts, we see there's a lot of precip in the equa equatorial areas. That's because that's where we have low pressure systems rising, cooling, condensing air, and producing um, lots of precipitation. So if I look at winter, we see that things have shifted slightly and we have more precipitation up in our neck of the woods because we're in the winter time up where we are. We can also um, take a look here at our upper air currents that are actually um, showing us where those upper air currents are going. So we see we can have these westerlies up here and then easterlies in the next zone down. And here we can see that a little bit better in this map. So we've got our westerlies in our neck of the woods in the feral cell, and then in the subtropical area, we end up with the tropical area, we have easterlies blowing the opposite way. All right, so some of the causes of these patterns that we see is latitude, cooler near the poles, warmer near the equator, and then the circulation patterns that we've discussed. Land sea dis distribution, usually for closer to the ocean, we have milder climate, less extremes. Relief, we have rain shadow effect, especially where we live in Hood River and Portland. And also as you go higher elevation, you have decrease temperatures, and then of course, Earth's rotation to help uh, develop those different cells, the easterlies, the westerlies, and the different two different jet streams. So that is global circulation patterns in a nutshell. We'll come back and talk about 
the last three items, air masses, weather fronts, and cyclones in the next three videos.